Welcome to Tia's table today. You know, I'm kind of still astonished to see that governments are discussing and debating the use of face masks, like it's new knowledge. Now, I see a slight turn of events in the, in the West, specifically in the Czech Republic, and I see America is now having a slow change of heart. Where I live in Asia, masks are the norm. This is not new evidence. I saw pictures of people during the 1918 pandemic, flu pandemic, wearing masks, so I don't understand the debate at all. Now today we're going to look at some substantial and new evidence, or maybe not new evidence, but new to some people, about the usefulness of wearing face masks during a pandemic. I know we have covered this in a previous vlog, but I approached it in a basic manner, because I thought everybody really knows, and just to make sure I covered it. But I now see in the West, they really don't know. They don't get it. And masks really do work as one of the preventive measures. I mean, you still have to not touch your face and wash your hands, etc. But masks do work. I still hear specialists and experts say in the Western countries that a mask could do more harm than good and could give you some sense of false security or whatever. But at the same time, they're pleading for masks to be given to hospitals and medical personnel. So, by that logic, masks work for doctors and frontline workers, but not for regular people? That makes absolutely no sense. I will leave a link for you below that presents a graph of how countries who are wearing masks are faring during a pandemic, and how countries who are not wearing masks are doing. And it's clear from this that Masks can suppress the virus substantially. In the same discussion preceding the graph, there's a hospital in America that forbade their nurses to wear their own masks. They ran out of masks and the nurses said, okay, they'll buy their own. And they forbade them to wear their own masks. And it seems that they still believe that the mask, the, the virus, sorry, the virus mainly spreads through droplet infection. But it's been known for weeks that the virus can aerosolize. I don't understand how this is still a thought. I don't get it. Now, even with excellent personal protection equipment, many doctors have fallen ill with the virus in China, and Italy, and, and Spain, and elsewhere. And it's paramount that you don't believe this uninformed lie. Listen to the entire link for yourself to be informed. And it gives lots of interesting data regarding the wearing of masks and respirators. For regular people, ordinary people, especially in the West, ignore people who stare at you if you're wearing a mask. It's just a sign of their ignorance and cultural bias. Here in Thailand, it's absolutely the norm to wear a mask, and don't let others stop you from protecting yourself. The only people I see here not with a mask are young teenagers who think they're invincible, maybe a couple of very old people who think, oh, well, I'm this old. I've seen it all, and mostly Westerners. And in some parts of Thailand, some provinces, it's now the law to wear a mask. Now, you'll excuse me if I consult my notes more than usual today. You know, some people have a bad hair day. I'm having a bad brain day today, so I'm just going to check my notes. But I wanted to get this information out to you as soon as possible because I think it's quite important. Now, some new data confirms what has been known to, to Asian people for quite some time, that masks do work. And this might help to persuade Western countries, which is the aim of this video today. I will leave a link for you below and would like to encourage you to watch the whole video, not just around a minute mark or a 15 minute mark, but the whole video, as it pertains to many important areas of concern that Western countries still don't quite grasp. There are some excellent and persuasive visuals in the link that demonstrates how a mask can prevent even the finer droplets and aerialization of the virus to infect you and reach you. It's around about the 15 minute mark, but I would encourage you to really, truly watch the whole video below because it's interesting too. What you're looking at here is, uh, this is going to be a video using very, very specialized um, uh, imaging techniques, which has, you can see the outline here. Here's a person, here's a person. They're just talking, and what's being uh, captured by this video process are the particles that are coming out of their mouths while they're talking, okay? 
See all those particles floating around? Some of those are going straight to the floor. You see those? You see those ones that just dropped out? Let's rewind. Let's watch this again. See when they talk, some of these drop very quickly. They're right. See those? Watch those ones that drop quickly. See that? Yeah. Those drop very quickly within a meter. But look at the rest of them floating around. Every one of these is large enough to be imaged, which means it's large enough to carry uh, millions and millions of virus particles. This same link will further explain how a study found that asymptomatic cases were responsible for 79% of further infections. This alone should persuade you to wear a mask. I mean, if you don't know who's shedding the virus, the best way to go about it is wearing a mask. And you should insist that anyone who visits you or who comes into close proximity should wear a mask. Furthermore, this link will discuss a study that recently came out confirming that for effective social distancing, the distance suggested by the World Health Organization is too short. And in my opinion, the World Health Organization has been late to the party and often quite inaccurate. The study shows that seven to eight meters is too conservative. And this expands upon earlier studies that found that the virus can infect up to 4.5 meters with ease. So it's actually now a bigger distance and you should bear that in mind. I see one to two meters distancing being the norm in supermarkets and other places and other countries and that's just ridiculous. It won't work. Which begs the question, why is anyone still flying? How irresponsible can you be? Think of the 79% that you can potentially help infect if you don't care about yourself. I mean, and you should wear a mask to protect others, if not yourself. Now we've talked about, in a former vlog, we've talked about surgical masks and N95 masks. But there's an interesting study that shows that a surgical mask is still very useful. This study found that doctors who wore surgical masks and others who wore N95 masks had a comparable rate of infection with, when dealing with regular flu, not this COVID-19 disease. And I will leave a link that discusses the study for you below. What one should consider when you look at a study like this is how did the doctors handle their personal protection equipment, or PPE for short. And I will leave an interesting link for you below. I found it to be very interesting that will show you how an infection control specialist was put to work in China to prevent more doctors from getting infected during the COVID-19 pandemic when it was at its height in China. Part of his training was aimed at showing the doctors how to take off their PPE without stirring up or aerosolizing the virus. It's a very informative clip for lay people and for doctors in particular. The medical team practices using flour as a virus substitute. The rule is not to spread the powder when taking off the gear. There's been lots of positive feedback for the job she is doing. He's grateful for the cooperation and happy that his efforts have been widely recognized. But in general, all information point to the N95 being the best mask, but a surgical mask still offers considerable protection. The quality of a surgical mask is also of importance. But if you've never worn one, how would you know it's good quality? Now, we've discussed in a former vlog that it should be three-layered. But I will leave a link for you below that compares the quality of six different surgical masks and how they are tested for quality. And it's a very informative video for both lay people and doctors. And perhaps it will persuade some doubters that a surgical mask is of benefit and it's not just a piece of cloth. I've given you a lot of extra links to watch already, but I really think this is very important information. And I will leave another short recently posted video that explains why you should wear a mask and it has good, concise information. And I very strongly recommend that you watch it. I've covered in a previous video, surgical masks, N95 and P2 masks. 
But I've discovered that there are other classifications that work just as well or even better. And maybe you can still find some of these. And they are KN95, HFP2, N99, N100, P95, P99, P100, R95, and R99. Bingo! And perhaps you can still purchase some of these. <laughs> so someone, the cameraman, shouted bingo at the wrong spot. And you Sorry. know what? I'm going to leave that in because I'm having a tough time recording today. I don't feel that smart, but there you go. He shouted bingo. <laughs> bingo, what is he? What are you, 80 years old? So. Almost 60. <laughs> What can you do? As a final suggestion, it's important to know that if you have a beard, this will compromise the fit of the mask. So if you go into a hot zone or a crowded area, you should be clean shaven before putting on a mask. Hopefully this will all just soon go away. But experts do talk of a second wave and they refer to winter months as a vulnerable time. Of course, here in Bangkok, we don't have a winter, so lucky us. But you might just as well get used to wearing a mask and inform yourself properly. It might be prudent for the foreseeable future to wear a mask in public or crowded places. Time will tell. I will tell you next time how to make a good quality mask for yourself or for senior citizens or medical personnel who are running out of masks. I will also show you new ways and new data on how to refresh a used mask. I hope that you are making the best of these strange times and that you live your life in such a manner that you can look back one day and say, I did something for someone else in a crisis. Be careful and be kind to one another and see you soon. And Lawrence, would you like to say something to other people? I just want to apologize for interrupting the broadcast. Sorry. But I need to say one more thing. Bingo!